State your name, your crew, and where you from. Wicked. I represent the Megahertz Massive with uh, Raimundo and Felix, Rice Styles, and Be Rich. Um, from Mountain View, originally from Milpitas, M Town. Giants fan, or you just like the hat? Giants fan since July of '86. Oh shit! Yeah. Okay. World Series bound, huh? That's right. All right, all right. All right. All right, brother. I got. I ask every DJ this. And I got to ask you this. What's your first DJ mixer you ever bought or stole? Realistic. Or Realistic. Yeah, really. From Radio Shack, and then I went to that spot, the crazy, crazy Benny's, and got a new mark something. I don't remember. So what was that the, the, the realistic joint? Did it have the, the crossfader on it? Or yeah. It had a yeah. Okay. Was it Benny's at the flea market or Benny's at the shop on, at the on Alum market. Rock? Okay. Flea market. Yeah. Oh shit! They had a shop with the uh, Alum Rock. Yeah, he had a shop on Alum Rock and Capital. Mm, I don't uh, remember that. I remember mm -hmm. just going to the flea market. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. What, yeah. Got, what, what got you into DJ? Just have, um, buying records, man. I mean, I, I've loved hip hop since '84. Got into it because of Beat Street, the movie. Uh, Saw it in yeah. East San Jose in the neighborhood and was like, right. just fell in love with the culture and the music right. and everything from that. And um, so I just started buying records in '89. Had a few hundred records and was like, man, I just want to be able to make my own like blend tapes. You right, know? right, right. I just nod my head all the way through, start to finish. You know, and right. That's how. It, just yeah, just having records. So who taught you how to mix? Who taught you how to match beats? Nobody. I Solo did. Cholo and yep. shit? I mean, I used to watch like friends, but I was always too shy to like get on it myself. Oh, you know, so like and my boy, um, Alan Lim, he was a uh, part of sequence play in Milpitas, like, uh -huh. like ninety ninety one, and he used to always DJ in the garage, and we'd all hang out there. When right. they when they would go do something, and I'd be out there by myself, I like, know oh, here, you know, and right. I'd get on and mess around myself, you know. But right. I was always too shy, you know, to do it. So, so did it at home. That's dope. So you you like collecting vinyl? War with some of the shops you used to buy? Star, of course. Right. Yeah. Bought my first record up in Star. NWA's Express Yourself 12 inch. Damn, you remember. 89. That was a great record, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the most valuable vinyl do you have right now? On the know? personal tip, like, oh, it, not not dollar wise, personally. Man, that's tough to say because there's just so much. Yeah? Give me, give me a good five of your good ones. Wow, a good five. Hey, just give me five. Damn. Just five, bro. That's crazy, man. Top of the head, roll them off. Probably some Pete Rock. <laughs> okay. Shit, you know, some Gangstar shit. You know, I, I was always a big fan of that. You know, East Coast. The Boom Bap. Bap you know. Yeah. And of course, you know, the West Coast, the, the Derelicts and Homeless Derelicts and Souls of Mischief and all that. You know. Bums. Damn. That's tough to mm, list, list off bombs. five. I could go to anything, man. I, I, I go through stages where it's like, this is my favorite right now. And then you get into something else and I'm always digging it's through the problem with being a record. You ever, you ever play uh, cross genres? You ever play like dance music or club music? Or it was always been strictly hip hop? Strictly hip hop. Um, sometimes I would play like that R&B that had the hip hop feel where you right. have somebody like spitting a verse on there. Right, you right, know, right, like right. that kind of stuff. And I'd be right. out doing gigs with like Mundo and some of these other cats, you know. Okay. Those kind of places where you got to play more friendly stuff. Like that right, 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 right. You can't just be like a New York basement all the time. Right, 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 right. That, so, was, that was me back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> as much as I wanted to do the basement shit all the time, you know. It's right. like, you know, it's nice to spin stuff where you can see some girls dancing you know right, not right. just a bunch of heads smoking a blunt bobbing their head you know <laughs> what's fat beats fat beats uh you know fat beats the record store um in uh, la or in well now they moved to la right they have, in new york right yeah well they they originally started in new york and they right. had spots and i think in what um amsterdam atlanta and la mm -hmm. the la store closed <laughs> that's right maybe three four years ago i forget yeah. what it was maybe they reopen up yeah well they still ran the distribution out in new york and now new york moved to Los Angeles, and they're like right next to one of the pressing plants. Oh, dope. I guess to save the save on the cost of shipping vinyl all the way out to New York and shit. Right, right. So yeah, now they're out there. So just pick this joint up on the, the site with That's a few dope. records. <laughs> uh, you know, it's crazy now. Again, you know, and I, and Raymundo and Felix, uh, you know, they inspired me to play vinyl because the last show that they did last year for that, um, you know, their fucking anniversary uh, anniversary called the Tweaker Show because they did that for <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. twelve night. midnight or ten to whatever tweaker hours yeah you know buying vinyl so i started going back and started buying vinyl again you know um i've noticed that the the prices have gone up on yeah. vinyl so there's a, a, a big resurgence on on vinyl what's yeah. your take on that do you, do you approve it. it uh oh yeah the, man I, the I, fucking I, I, hipsters buying all this shit with the tight pants you know I mean, hey, that kind of pisses me off bro yeah, they, they brought mean, up the price on that just because you make a hundred thousand dollars a yeah, year yeah yeah and you think it's a fucking in style to have a beard <laughs> with your hat turned to the side, <laughs> your tight ass pants with your fucking vans playing vinyl. Yeah, yeah. And you went to college and I didn't. Especially how like uh, the forty fives are all popular now. Did Reese just ran or what, dude? dude. Damn. <laughs> I mean, I'm just happy because I've always been an all vinyl cat. I mean, I, I buy CDs too. You know, I got a couple right. thousand CDs. You know, but I've always been love the sound of vinyl plus mixing. You know, I'm gonna mix. I can't. I don't. It's mixing with CDs, just not the same. Oh god! You know? yeah. I mean, it's fine, but it's like, come on, you gotta spend vinyl. Even if you're doing Serato, at least you're at least you're using vinyl. Right, right. You right. know, but um, 
Yeah, I love it because like I would say probably like oh eight oh nine is when vinyl really hit like an all time low. All right. You'd have maybe maybe I could count on two hands the amount of albums that were pressed on vinyl within those couple of years. You know, no, and, and the twelve inch single went extinct pretty much. You know, I, I remember in two thousand four when I started uh, my boy King Shamik from Twin Hype. Oh yeah, you know, King Shamik. He really inspired me and it's like, yo, you got to start doing this digital route because I noticed we did a mixtape and he was playing all these beats are like exclusive and I can hear like Sean Paul toasting yep. him, Busta Rhymes, etc. right? And then I go, yo, can I take you out to, to breakfast before you go back to uh, Brick City, to New Jersey? He goes, yeah. And so he was telling me that vinyl is dying and now he goes, we don't have record stores in, at Back East. I go, so how you get your music? And he was telling about the MP3. Yeah. So I did that route, but I just didn't like the, how yeah. it felt, man. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I look at it like this. There's a lot of DJs that do Serato now. I mean, it is a little bit too easy for people to get on. Yeah. It is what it is, you know, but there are a lot of DJs who still, like, do it as if they're spinning vinyl. Right. You know, they still go back and forth. They don't just press the button. Right. Yeah. Right, you know, right. those are the ones that I tend to watch more and right, pay right. attention more. I mean, because it's not... I mean, I know a lot of people will say, oh, you know, vinyl, vinyl, and I'm, I'm a vinyl purist too, right. but it's like, it's how you do it too. You right, know? right, right, right. I mean, you know, the digital it's shit, it's definitely place, easier. Right. You know? I mean, because you could, like you said, you could make a remix, you could do a joint, whatever, and throw it onto your laptop right away, and you can right. have immediate access to spin it. Right, Whereas right. somebody like me, I can only spin what gets pressed. Right, Sometimes right. an album doesn't get pressed till six months after the album came out. Right. So I'm spinning the, I'm spinning the shit six months late because the vinyl wasn't available, you know? I just but, miss those days when I used to come home and I'll have like a stack of records sent to me by all the records, all yeah. the promos, but they don't, you know, now... Yeah, no, you ain't getting no promos anymore. I, I, I hate that, you know, it's not no kid that has a, the exclusive hit, you know, joint that I got, and now he has, you know, it just doesn't yeah. make no, it. No, I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I got a lot of records in my crate where maybe there's only a hundred press, maybe right. there's five hundred press, and it's like you think like, wow, well, then maybe only five hundred people have it. Well, now everyone's out has right, it because right. someone converts it, puts it on their laptop, and you know, right. again, it is it's how you do it, but still, you know, that that whole. Do you think that um, record labels are going to start pressing the vinyls like singles again? Nowadays, it's more like everyone's doing it independently. Right. You know, like sometimes they're even like it's putting true. the album out digitally and on CD, and even that's going extinct CDs. But they're putting it out there, engaging the response, and if there's a good response, then pressing it up. Right. Or sometimes people are even doing these Kickstarters now, where you're, you and me, and, and everybody else is like helping fund right. getting these vinyls pressed. But, right. And they, and then you got the limited labels now too. Right. A lot of these limited labels that are pressing up 300 copies of stuff. Right. Digging into pe you know producers' crate like vaults, like Derelicts, um, Hen Boogie. You know, he just did that little deal with Chopterian Records right. out in France, where. He, he put out some of his. He put out his '94 demo tape on vinyl, previously unavailable on CD, unavailable anywhere. Now it's out on vinyl because Hen Boogie linked the deal with uh, Bob from Chuck. Yeah, I gotta give a quick plug to uh, Kenny Dope site. You guys gotta go on yeah. there. Uh, KD Records. He got a lot of reissues. If you're still looking for all the vinyl and 45s. And he's working with a uh, Rash Rashid Chappelle out of New York. They right. put out a dope album a couple years ago called right. Future Nostalgia, and they got a new one. Coming soon, all produced by Kenny Dope. He's still doing that boom bap shit yeah, too. Yeah, man, I love Kenny Dope. Yep, much respect. What's your Dope. What's your dream gig, man? Man, just like uh, probably like a basement somewhere in New York. All right. Just smoke all in the air, you know. Pete Rock with the Yankee hat spinning. <laughs> you know, and then maybe me coming on before him, you know. Maybe spinning with like DJ Evil D of the Beat Miners premiere. You know those kind of cats. You know Rob Swift. All right. You know, that, that stuff like that. Nice. You know, maybe even Cuba could be in the house. You know, you know, someone like well, that. You know? Don't forget to invite us because I would like yeah, to be yeah. part of that. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Tell me where that party is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much. We're going to definitely be having our brother Wicked on. Look for him on the upcoming Eagle Question Show. That's right, baby. Peace. Peace.